I call Chris, the Honourable Chris Carter. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Well, Mr Chairman, I rise uh, in this House in an unusual circumstance, saying, feeling that I agree with John Boscarin. And I have to say, John, that's not well, often that I do, but I certainly agree with the comments you've just made about this budget. Mr. Mr. Not all of it, but most of it. Essentially, Mr uh, Chairman, this budget is a fraud. It's a fraud because it's about transferring wealth. From the, richest New Zealand, from the poorest New Zealanders to the richest. You know, one of the myths of this country, perpetuated by conservative politicians led by John Key, is that somehow we are an overtaxed country. Mr Chairman, the, the, never let facts stand in the way of a good story. The reality is that in the OECD, New Zealand has the third lowest rate of personal taxation among developed countries, the third lowest. Where is this transfer of wealth going to impact? It's going to impact on the delivery of services in this country, Mr Chairman. What we're doing and what we're saying, what the, well, well, not what Labor's doing and not what Labor's saying, but what National is saying and its coalition partners, is that for having $90 in the pocket of a rich New Zealander, we're going to get third-rate social services and government services. Education is an excellent example. $400 million being taken, Mr Chairman, out of early childhood education. And how is it going to impact? It's about saying to early childhood education centres where they have qualified teachers, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's, in who's working with those children. It doesn't matter how well educated or how lacking in skills they are. It's saying this doesn't count. Now, as a former teacher and as a former Minister of Education, Mr Chairman, I know that a child's education journey, its success in education, his or her success, begins in quality early childhood education. You know, one of the great crocodile tears presented by the current national government is about underachievement in our country. It's about the tale of unsuccessful students in our schools, the 18 to 20 per cent. Actually, of course, the standard percentage in all developed countries, but we won't go explore that. How is this going to help them? Manukau City, 23 per cent of children at the moment go to early childhood education, and that might include one afternoon at the local church. So, you know, very variable quality. But 23 per cent of new entrants going into primary schools have been to early childhood education. And the stats for Manukau City and the failure of, of, of many students there in their educational achievement rests on that poor basis. How is this $400 million being taken out of the education budget, out of early childhood education, to pay for tax cuts for the richest New Zealanders? How is that going to impact on underachievement in our schools? It's going to make it worse, Mr Chairman, not better. Similarly, with the 4%, the, the so-called 4% OPS grant that's gone into schools, actually, with the GST rise and a 6% projected 6% or 5.9% inflation rate, schools are effectively getting a cut. They're going to get less in their OPS grant than they've currently got because of the changed economic circumstances. So the nonsense we heard yesterday from Mr Key, an increase in funding for education, is just that. It's a fraud. Schools are going to have less resources to spend on lifting educational achievement in New Zealand. I wonder how the Maori Party will address that question because that's going to impact particularly on those students that figure largely in our underachievement stats, Māori and Pacifica children. The very kids that we want to lift up are being disadvantaged because wealthy New Zealanders are getting this tax cut. I read in the media the other day that this tax cut, this, these changes in our tax system, will take $16 billion out of the New Zealand economy over the next four years. We are, Mr Chairman, currently borrowing $250 million a week to, to, to bridge the deficit. We're, we're borrowing, and at the same time, we're cutting $16 billion out of our government's resources. I mean, what madness. Can you imagine any other developed country doing this? And why, why is it happening? Because it's catering to the constituency that put the national government into power. But actually, of course, the middle group, the swing voters in the middle, are going to see over the next year, and I think my colleague Stevie Chadwick from Rotorua talked about this, they're going to see over the next year what these cuts actually mean. I think the Herald this morning referred to it as a thousand little cuts. 
Well, it could be a death by a thousand cuts. You just go into the education system and see what cuts are being made there. I call the honourable